In this video we're going to learn about inequality regions. This will build upon the ideas in my previous two videos, the equation of a line and straight line graphs. There are links to those in this video's description and I'd recommend checking those out first before you do this video. The reason I'm doing this video is because it was requested by one of my followers. So if there's a topic that you would like to see a video on, leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do. So for this topic you're likely to be given a grid and asked to represent an inequality on it, for example x is less than or equal to 5. If x is less than or equal to 5, we're looking for all of the points where the x coordinate is less than or equal to 5. For example, this one here. Here the x coordinate is 2, and 2 is certainly less than or equal to 5. This one's also okay, the x coordinate here is 1, and 1 is less than or equal to 5. Even this one here is okay. I don't know the exact value of it, but it's somewhere between 3 and 4. So that one's okay, and so is this one. The x value here is actually 5, and 5 is less than or equal to 5. In fact, I could have any of the points that are on this line here. All of these points have the x coordinate 5. But I couldn't have any of the points to the right of this line because then it would be greater than 5. So this line here effectively forms a boundary. So what we do is we draw on that line, and then we shade the region we're interested in, which is all of the points to the left of this line, and of course on the line itself. You'll usually be asked to label or identify this region, and sometimes they say label the region R. So we'll put an R to identify the region. Notice how the line that we drew actually has the equation x equals 5. So when we draw the inequality x is less than or equal to 5, we're going to need to draw the line x equals 5 to help us do that. This will always happen with these inequalities. Let's try a second example. So this time we're going to do y is greater than or equal to 2. So we're going to need to draw on the line y is equal to 2. The line y equals 2 is a horizontal line that goes through 2 on the y-axis. That's this one here. We want all of the y coordinates to be greater than or equal to 2, so we want all of the points that are above this line, so the y coordinates are 3, 4, 5, and so on. So we shade this region and label it r. Let's try one more. So now we'll try x is greater than or equal to 4. So we need to draw the line of x is equal to 4. That's a vertical line cutting through 4 on the x-axis, this one here. Since we want x to be greater than or equal to 4, we're interested in the points to the right of this line. So the x coordinate could be 5, 6, 7, and so on. So we shade to the right of this line and label it r. Sometimes the inequality won't have the or equal to part. For example, this question could have said x is greater than 4. If x is greater than 4, it cannot be equal to 4. So we're no longer allowed to be on that red line. We just need everything to the right of it. So how do we distinguish between the two types of questions? Well, what we do is rather than drawing the line like that, we draw a dotted line. This represents the fact that we can't actually be on the line we just want everything to the right of it. So if you ever have a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to, you draw a solid line. If you have a less than or a greater than, you draw a dotted line. Sometimes you may get examples where there's two parts to the inequality, like this one here. This is saying that x is in between 1 and 5, but it's allowed to be equal to 1, but not equal to 5. For this one, we'll need to draw two lines. We need to draw the line of x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 5. But since this one's less than or equal to, we'll use a solid line. So we draw a solid line at x is equal to 1, and this one is just less than, so it doesn't have the or equal to part, so we draw a dotted line at x equals 5. Then we want all of the points that are in between these two lines, so we shade that region and label it r. In an exam question, you're likely to be given multiple inequalities on the same diagram. For instance, these three inequalities here. So we need to identify the region that satisfies all of these inequalities at the same time. So for x is greater than or equal to 1, we're going to need to draw x is equal to 1. So that's this vertical line here. For y is greater than or equal to 3, we need to draw y is equal to 3. That's this horizontal line here. And for the bottom one, x plus y is less than 7, we need to draw the line of x plus y is equal to 7. I've already covered how to draw lines like this in my previous video, the one in this video's description. So I'm not going to go into great detail of this, but we know it's going to cross through 0, 7, and also 7, 0. So we need to draw a straight line between them and that will form the line. But since this one is a less than rather than a less than or equal to, we need to use a dotted line. So now we need to try and identify the region that satisfies all three of these at the same time. So if we start with the red one, x is greater than or equal to 1, that means we need to be to the right of the red line. So I'm going to draw an arrow like this to say we want to be to the right of that line. For y is greater than or equal to 3, we need to be above the blue line. So I'll draw an arrow pointing up above the blue line. And for the last one, x plus y is less than 7. If you've got a less than like that, you need to be below the line. So I'm going to draw an arrow down from the line. So we need to find the region where all three of these arrows are pointing to, and that's this region here, 
this triangle in the middle. So we label that R, and that's that question done. An exam question will probably be worded like this. Shade the region represented by, and then you'll get some inequalities, and label the region R. So we're going to take all of these inequalities, but replace the inequality with an equal sign. So we need to draw y is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 2x plus 1, and 4x plus 3y equals 12. For y is equal to negative 2, that's a horizontal line going through negative 2 on the y-axis. And I've used a solid line because it was greater than or equal to. For y is equal to 2x plus 1, I would use a table of values. Once again, I'm not going to go into all of the detail of this, that's in the previous video, the one that's linked in this video's description. So we need some x and y values, and I'm going to select some nice x values, 0 up to 3, and I substitute that in to get my y values, which would be 1, 3, 5, and 7. So I can now plot the points 0, 1, 1, 3, 2, 5, and 3, 7 doesn't fit on the diagram, but that's not a problem. As long as you've plotted at least two points, you'll be able to draw the line. You may want to go for three just to be sure that you haven't made a mistake. Now I need to do this line as a dotted line because the inequality was y is less than 2x plus 1. So I draw a dotted line going through these points. And onto the final line, 4x plus 3y equals 12. In the previous videos, we learned how to do this by substituting in x and y is equal to 0. So we'll start with x is 0, which would give 3y is 12, so y would be 4. So the coordinate 0, 4 must be on the line. Then we substitute y is 0, which would give 4x equals 12, so x would be 3. So the point 3, 0 must be on the line. If you're not following that process, I'd recommend going back to watch the video on straight line graphs where I explain it in more detail. So we need to plot the point 0, 4, that goes here, and 3, 0, that goes here, and draw a nice straight line between them. And once again, this one was just less than, so we're going to do a dotted line. So now we need to identify which region it is. So if we look at the inequalities, y is greater than or equal to negative 2, so that would be above the line. So I'm going to draw an arrow going up above the red line. Then we have y is less than 2x plus 1, so we need to be below the blue line. So I'll draw an arrow going down from the blue line. And finally, for the purple one, we've got 4x plus 3y is less than 12, so it's less than, so we're going to be below the line. So draw an arrow going down from the purple line. So the region where all of these is true is this triangle in the middle again. So we would label that one as R, and that's the question completed. Let's try another example. So once again, we're going to draw these inequalities, but with an equal sign instead. So y equals 1, y equals half x plus 3, and y equals 5 minus 3x. Y equals 1 is nice and easy, that's a horizontal line going through 1 on the y-axis, and I've done it solid because it was a greater than or equal to. Next onto the blue one, I would use a table of values again, so we have x and y values, and I'm actually going to choose some nice x values which are even numbers since I'm going to have to half them, so 0, 2, 4, and 6. I would then get y values of 3, 4, 5, and 6. So if I plot as many of these points as I can, I've got 0, 3, that goes here, 2, 4, that's here, 4, 5, that goes here, and I can actually plot this one, 6, 6, that goes here. If we look at the inequality, it was just a less than sign, so we need to draw a dotted line for this one. And onto the final one, the purple one, I would use a table of values again for this one. So we have x and y values, and I'm going to choose the x values as 0, 1, 2, 3, and the y values, when you work them out, would be 5, 2, negative 1, negative 4. So let's plot those, 0, 5, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, and 3, negative 4. This one is greater than or equal to, so we go back to a solid line, so a solid purple line here. Now we need to identify the region. So looking at y is greater than or equal to 1, that means we need to be above the red line, so I'll do a red arrow going up. Then we need to be below the blue line since it says y is less than, so I'll do a blue arrow going down from the blue line. And finally for the purple one, y is greater than or equal to, so I need to be above the purple line. So the region where all of these is true is this region here. You should know it's not always going to be a triangle. Now in an exam, you may not want to shade out the whole region like this. It will take a lot of time and it's not strictly necessary. Instead, you may just want to clearly use straight lines like this to identify the region you're talking about. Sometimes you may be given a question where the diagram's already been drawn and we need to do the reverse process by identifying the inequalities. So the question might say, write down the inequalities that define the shaded region. So what we want to do here is identify the equations of all of the lines first. This line here, which is horizontal, goes through 1 on the y-axis, so that's y is equal to 1. This one here is vertical and goes through negative 1 on the x-axis, so that's x is equal to negative 1. This one here is going to be a little bit trickier. We're going to find out the gradient and the intercept of this line to determine its equation, just like we did in the video, the equation of a line. Again, if you want to go back and watch that video, I'd recommend doing so. 
So to do this, we pick two coordinates on the line and draw a gradient triangle. We then work out the change in y and the change in x, which in this case, they're both 1. So to find the gradient, we do the change in y, 1, divide by the change in x, which is 1, and 1 divided by 1 is 1. So we know the gradient of this line is 1. We can see the coordinates of the y-intercept where it crosses the axis here at positive 6. So we now know the equation of the line must be y is equal to mx, but m is the gradient, which we know is 1, so it's just 1x, and then plus the y-intercept, which is positive 6. Now that we have the equations of all of these lines, we need to work out the inequalities. So for the first line, where it was y is equal to 1, we need it to be above the line. So we're going to be greater than this one. And it's dotted, so we'll use greater than rather than greater than or equal to. So y is greater than 1. For this vertical line here, we need to be to the left of it. And since it's a solid line, we'll use less than or equal to. So x is less than or equal to negative 1. And for the final line, we want to be below it. And it's a solid line again, so we'd use less than or equal to x plus 6. And that's the answer to this question. So for a question like this, you just find all of the equations of the lines, but then replace the equal sign with the correct inequality symbol. Let's try another example. So for this one, I'm going to start with this vertical line here. It goes through 1 on the x-axis, so that must be x is equal to 1. I've also got to be above the x-axis itself. The equation of the x-axis is y is equal to 0. So we'll use y is equal to 0. And then we have these two diagonal lines. Let's go for this one first. So we're going to pick two points on the line and find the gradient. We draw a gradient triangle and work out the change in y and the change in x. So the change in y is 1. So it's 1 over the change in x, which is 2. So the gradient of this line is a half. We then lead the y-intercept, which is down here at positive 1. So the equation must be y is equal to 1 half x plus 1. We'll do the other line as well, this one here. So we'll pick two points on the line and draw a gradient triangle. We work out the change in y and the change in x. And since this one is sloping downwards, we know it's going to be a negative gradient. The change in y is negative 2 and the change in x is 1. Negative 2 over 1 is negative 2. So the gradient of this one is negative 2, and you can see it's intercept up here at positive 6. So the equation is y is equal to negative 2x plus 6. Now we need to work out what inequality symbol to use. So we want to be to the right of this line, so we're going to change that to a greater than, and it's a dotted line, so it doesn't have the or equal to part, so just a regular greater than. We want to be above this line here, and the axis is of course a solid line, so we'll be greater than or equal to 0. For this line going down here, we need to be below it, and it's a solid line, so less than or equal to. And the same for this one, below this one, and it's a solid line, so less than or equal to. And that's the question complete. Sometimes we get exam questions that look like this. So here we've got a diagram, but it's not got a region identified, we just have the lines. And the question might say the diagram shows the lines, and then we're given their equations. We're then told that x and y are integers, which means whole numbers. And the question might say mark on with a cross each of the points that satisfies all the inequalities, and then we're given some inequalities. Notice that the equations of the lines in the diagram match the inequalities we've been asked to deal with. The only difference is the equal sign has been replaced with an inequality sign. The first thing to do is try and work out the region that these inequalities define. So we've got y is less than or equal to 7, so that must be below this line. We've then got x is greater than or equal to negative 3, that's to the right of this line, and y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 8, that's above this diagonal line. So the region is this triangle here. Now let's come back to this point here, x and y are integers. This means any of the coordinates in the region must have whole numbers for their coordinate. For example, you couldn't have x being 1.5. But you could have something like this point here, 1, 2, since x is 1 and y is 2, and they're both whole numbers. And you could even have this one here, 3, 5, or this one here, negative 4, 8. In fact, you could have any of these points here. We're only interested though in the integer value coordinates that are inside the region itself. So let's remove all of the ones that are not in the region and we're left with these ones here. So all you'd need to do is just mark on all of these crosses and that would be the question complete. Sometimes it's a little trickier though. For instance, this one here. This question has the same structure, but we need to be a little bit careful. We're going to identify the region first. So we've got y is greater than three. The line y equals three is the horizontal one. So we need to be above that line. Then we've got y is less than or equal to half x plus 5. That must be the line that crosses 5 on the y-axis, and it's got a positive gradient. So we can see which one that is, and we need to be below that line since it's less than or equal to. And the other line must be the one with a negative gradient that crosses the axis at plus 7. So we need to be below that line as well since it's less than or equal to. So the region we're talking about is this triangle here. So just like before, we're going to find all of the integer points that are in that region. 
And you might be thinking that these are the answers here. But we have to be extremely careful with this inequality. This time it doesn't say greater than or equal to, so we're not allowed to be on the line itself. So we need to remove all of the points that are actually on that line. So we need to take away all of these points here, and then the ones that are left behind would be the answer. So sometimes these questions look really straightforward. You just need to find the region and then mark all of the crosses on. But you do need to be careful about the inequality signs, in particular if it's not an or equal to one. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and go and try the exam questions in this video's description. If there's still a topic you would like me to cover that I haven't done, leave a comment and I'll do my best.